The Bitmap 2 from Red Panda is a very lovingly designed bit crusher distortion. And in this video, I'm going to show you five creative ways you can take advantage of some of its quirks. For starters, the bitmap has controls for bit depth and sampling rate, which is normal for a bit crusher, but it also has some additional ways to mangle your waveforms. Things it calls a wave folding or wave window. Uh, this is an example of what the wave window thing sounds like. Okay, so that's one thing. But the discovery here is to take the settings I just showed you and then run a delay pedal into that because it will completely confuse the bitmap in a spectacular way. And the result sounds like flickering flames. The bitmap also has a drive control, which is very interactive with its other knobs. And it's possible to dial in a sound that's like right in between overdrive and distortion, but doesn't sound like bit crushing at all. I almost never say this on this channel, but it sounds like it sounds good in the conventional sense of sounding good. Here's a comparison. This is what my clean sound is. Here's the bitmap. If you want a hot take, this sounds like what I always wish the Boss DS1 would sound like. The next pro tip is to bit crush your snare drum sound. So if you have a drum machine or drum samples from somewhere, run them into the bitmap using settings like these. This is sort of like the drummer's equivalent of stepping on a Boss SD1 or Boss Super Overdrive for a guitar solo. And it, it adds some extra sizzle to the sound, but it's also very mid-range focused. It's really attacking the mid-range frequencies especially. And like the Boss SD-1, you may or may not think it sounds better with the effect on. I'll show you a comparison in a second. But the other thing, maybe like the SD-1, is that it actually sounds better if you're going to do this. It sounds better in the context of a fully mixed song than it does by itself. Okay, the bitmap also has rate and depth controls for modulating the frequency knob, which is the sampling rate. 
Uh, so this pro tip is to tune that sampling rate to the key of the song you're in. He- here's what I mean. First, just put rate and depth on zero. And then uh, play the note of whatever key you're in. So I'm about to play a song in A minor, so I'm going to be playing in A. And I'm going to turn the frequency knob until it sounds like it's on an octave of my A note. Okay, then I'm going to put the wave shape on square. And what's going to happen now is it's going to flip between the place I just found on the frequency knob and some other place on the frequency knob. So what you want to do now is turn the depth knob until it sounds like that other place on the frequency knob is also an octave of the note, the A note that you're playing. And once you make it this far, you can play against that and it's going to have a really cool rhythmic effect. Pro tip number five, once again, uses the modulation section of the pedal, but this time we're going to do random to create a noise bed. Something I say on this channel from time to time is that advanced at the highest level is pure noise. And the only hard part is being able to differentiate between good pure noise and, and bad pure noise, which is hard, but I'm here to help you with this. And one way to do good noise is to randomly modulate the frequency of the bitmap and throw some reverb on there. Reverb is crucial to making a good noise bed. So throw some reverb on there, randomly modulate the bitmap like the settings I'm showing you here, and build something with that.